Hi everyone, and welcome to Serena New Beginnings episode number one. Why am I changing the name of the vlog? Because it is like New Beginnings. Since for the first time since I started this whole mess of transition, I finally actually feel like things are starting to work out. Um, I went to the con uh, the end of June. I came home and the next day I actually went to a real endocrinologist so I'm no longer doing the gray market hormones. I've got a prescription. I'm getting monitored. I'm doing it the right way and it's been awesome. I also got the letter so all of my IDs have been changed. So I'm a female on every ID, driver's license, passport, etc, etc. And that is just like you know, the only regret I have is that I didn't do it sooner than I did it. So, that has been awesome. Uh, I got my car, uh, my Trans Am that I've been working on for like eons. That's actually getting done now. It's uh, getting some work done on the axle and gears right now. So, it's in a shop, but it's being worked on. So, that's cool. And I found out that my insurance will pay for my uh, final surgery, the bottom surgery. And so I should only have to pay the deductible, which if I get on the right insurance plan, it shouldn't be too much for me to handle. I mean, yeah, sure, it's going to take a big bite out of my paycheck for about a year, but hey, you know, <laughs> how can I go wrong doing it that way? I mean, sure, what am I working for anyway, right? And... Lastly, tomorrow I am going to get my first FFS, going to get my nose done, which I've wanted to do for a long time. A lot of people are going to say, hey, you don't need to, it looks fine. But you know what, if people hadn't been giving me crap about it my entire life, then maybe I wouldn't have a complex about it and I wouldn't be doing it. But that's not the way things worked out. So, that's going to happen tomorrow. Check-ins at 5.30 in the morning. It's going to be a nightmare because that's freaking early. And since it takes about an hour to get there, we're going to be on the road at 4.30 and it takes me about an hour to get ready. So it's I'm probably going to have to get up at 3.30 in the freaking morning, which like that's even earlier than the freaking birds wake up. So anyway, yeah. So, but yeah, I've got, got my hair done recently. So that's kind of cool. Got my nails done recently. It's got the the color change nail gel on them so depending on the temperature they change colors which is kind of cool at least I thought it was cool and uh, yeah so um, nothing else has really been happening unfortunately I can't go to Nebraska this year because Nebraska starts tomorrow and obviously I'm going to be getting my operation done my little surgery so I'm not going to be able to go to the con so that kind of sucks but hey well, whatever there's always another one next year only next year it probably won't be as warm during the con as it is this year so that's gonna suck but well you win some you lose some anyway yeah I will keep you updated on the surgery I will probably take some pictures or some video from tomorrow so I guess stay tuned for that, and uh, I will see everybody later. Bye-bye. You should see the other guy. Do you Yay! On the way home after getting the stuff off my face. Hi, everyone. So here I am after the surgery. As you can see, all the crap is off my nose now, and uh, it's it's still a little bit swollen, especially right here. It's also a little bit numb, but that subsides over time. I think someone told me once that it takes about a year for the swelling to go down completely, like vanish. Still have a few marks on my face. There's one right here, and there's a bruise down here, but I easily cover that up with makeup, so when I go back to work in a few days, uh, if it's still there, which it probably won't be, because they're really, really fading fast. I mean, you can barely see it anymore. I mean, I used to be, this one used to be just black, if, as the pictures showed, so whatever. Anyway, yeah, so...
still a little bit hard to breathe through my nose because, I mean, the nasal passages are all swollen up and, you know, I, I kind of sound like I have a cold a little bit. But, you know, it's easier than it was. So, I guess it's better than when I had it packed full of stuff because then I had to sleep with my mouth wide open and I would wake up like five times a night with my mouth so dry it would actually hurt. So I'd have to have a cup of water right by my bed so I could drink something. And then when they took the stuff out, it was like, it felt like, you know, a clown pulling stuff out of their nose, little handkerchiefs. I mean, it just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. I was just like, holy cow, no wonder it felt like it was in my sinuses. I couldn't believe how much stuff was actually packed in there. I had to change the gauze a couple times and it actually stuck together and I started pulling the stuff out. I'm like, yeah, I don't need that happening. If that happens, the nasal passages could actually collapse and then then you got a whole host of problems. So I'm glad it lasted. Anyway, I go back to work on Saturday, this Saturday, day after Black Friday. I don't leave the house on Black Friday. That that stuff's gotten way out of hand and I I am not brave enough to handle mobs like that. About the only mobs I can actually handle are when I go to anime cons, which I had to miss Nebraska con because I was having this done at the same time. So I was kind of bummed because it was actually in a new hotel. It was like in a, it was a really big, nice, fancy new hotel because they outgrew the old one. 6,000 people were there last year and yeah, the, the hotel wasn't <laughs> wasn't built to accommodate that many people, so they had to to move it to a bigger hotel. I didn't have a room anyway, so you know, big deal. But anyway, yeah, as I said in my last video, which was like already, and as I said before, I'm actually seeing an endocrinologist now, so I'm getting my transition actually monitored, and the stuff, the medications being prescribed. And I'm getting looked at. I have to go every six months. It's uh, it's kind of kind of spendy, but you know, what's what's more important? You know, my transition or money? <laughs> I guess that's been the big question the whole the whole transition through. You know, so I guess the first bill was what was it twelve hundred dollars? So yeah, it wasn't cheap, but. See, I could have saw him way back when, like around like 16 years ago, but my therapist at the time said when he tried to get me an oncologist to see me, nobody would because they didn't want to deal with anyone who was transgendered. So that kind of had an impact on me, even though I didn't really believe that because, I mean, is that against the Hippocratic Oath? Hippocratic Oath, however you say that. Hippocrates. Whatever. People make fun of my pronunciation. Stop doing that. Anyway. So, anyway, I think that was against their oath that they take, and so I didn't really believe that he actually said that, but then again, you know, I'm not sure if it is the same with specialists as it is with, you know, general practitioners, so I wasn't actually sure, but it actually had an impact on me, and I was really kind of scared to see one and even converse with one and try and get an appointment because I was afraid I'd be kicked out, so... Anyway, I was at my dermatologist and I asked her if she knew the guy because my mom's general practitioner actually gave us the name and number of one in Sioux Falls. So, I mean, I'm not from Sioux Falls, but I mean, that's usually where I go to get stuff done because this town is freaking tiny, but whatever. Anyway, so went to my uh, dermatologist and asked her if she knew because she has been in, you know, dermatology for like you know a long long time and doctors no matter what field they're in they usually have these big conventions where they get together and they they talk and do all this stuff and I thought maybe she had met him somewhere I mean he's in the same town and stuff so I asked her and yeah she knew him and I asked is he a nice guy so she said she he was a super nice guy so that kind of took the edge off a little bit so I gave him a call well, actually, I called the office. I didn't call him, obviously. I had to talk to his receptionist, but you know what I mean. And I got an appointment scheduled, and, you know, he really didn't know why I was there because he's more of a reproductive endocrinologist. And obviously, you know, saying that I'm not planning on getting pregnant and can't for the most part. <laughs> so 
he pretty much said, what do you want me to do for you? And I told him. And, you know, I said, well, right now I just would like to get a prescription for hormones. So I can just go to the corner drugstore and pick some up when I need some. It's kind of annoying right now because I only get about two weeks worth of uh, the Spirotone. And, uh, yeah, having to go get some every two weeks is really a pain in the butt. So... So I get that, and then there's an uh, estrogen pill. I have to take estradiol two, twice, twice, two times a day. And then there's a shot that I have to give myself every three months, which isn't so bad because I used to give myself shots anyway of, like, what was it, Depo Prover or whatever back in the day. So I'm pretty good at giving myself shots. So I did that. Anyway, yeah, so I have to go see him on the 28th of December, and I'm hoping that maybe for a little Christmas present, late Christmas present to me, he can give me a letter of recommendation to have my bottom surgery done. Because that is really something that needs to get done, and it's pretty much next on the list. I was going to wait until I was done with everything else, and that'd be like the big finale, but... Uh, the first time I saw him, he gave him my letter uh, to get my IDs changed, to get my gender changed on all my IDs. So, yeah, my driver's license has an F on it. My passport has an F on it. Pretty much all my identification has an F on it. So I would like everything to kind of match. Because, as you all know, there's, like, stupid laws that are trying to be passed here and there, discriminating against transgender people, the stupid bathroom law. North Carolina, enough said, and there was actually one that was tried to pass in this state before North Carolina, but the governor vetoed it, thank God. So it didn't affect me, it was only for like in schools, but still, you know, you give them an inch and they'll try to take a mile. You know, every little, every little thing leads to something else. So, you know, given the state of the government that's going to be taking shape here in a few months, uh want to try and get it done as soon as possible. Let's let's just leave it at that. Yeah, it finally, finally seemed like everything was going to work out. For the first time since I started this crazy transition, it looked like everything was finally going to work out. And then that had to happen. So, oh well. I guess we have to do what we can do. Lastly, I got my my car in, my Trans Am. I'm sure you all, you know, if you've been following my videos for a while, you saw the pictures of it after the body work was done. And then we've had it sitting in the garage for like the past four years or something like that. Finally got that out, took it to a guy, got it running, uh, drove it around a bit and realized that there was something off. It seemed like it was doing this when you drove it. So, uh, we took it to an alignment place and found out that the rear axle was bent and the actual casing that the axle was in was also bent. So they had to pretty much rip off the whole rear end and put a whole new rear end back on. So that's that, that, was, that was great. And then we changed the gears on it because it went 65 miles an hour in low. So the hut, I don't know what the high end of it, I don't know what, what it maxed out at, but it was probably really high, like around 150 to 175, but it didn't get there very quickly, and I kind of like to be, you know, the speed limit on the interstate's 80, so you don't really need to go any faster than that. So we had him change the gears a little bit, and I, I guess now, you know, when you when you hit the gas, you get thrown back in your seat, which I kind of like. And I'm not sure what kind of application it has, it just, I don't know, just kind of feels cool. So... Yeah, so now when it goes like, you know, 40 miles an hour, the speedometer is reading 75. So, yeah, we took it to another shop. We're going to have all the electricals fixed because none of the blinkers work. About half the taillights work. In fact, I think the only lights that actually work on it are the headlights. So, have to get that fixed. And they're going to do some work on the engine. They think the engine might actually be wrecked now. So I might have to change it out with the 400 engine that's sitting in the garage that we took out of a 1970 Pontiac Catalina. There are two Pontiacs, so it should interchange. I'm going to lose three cubic inches, but, you know, who cares? 
it won't be as valuable without the original, you know, Oldsmobile engine that it came with, but, I don't know, whatever. It's not like, you know, it's not going to be valuable in the, in the end anyway. So we have to get that done, and then we have to get the exhaust all fixed up, because when they painted it, they painted the exhaust pipes purple as well, and I'm not liking that. And so then we have to get a new stereo system put in. I gotta get the interior work done. Have to go to a, a window place and have probably the windows either replaced or polished and then tinted. So yeah, there's quite a few more stops before it's actually going to be drivable. But, you know, it's a process. Restoring a classic car like that is never a nice little chore. It's usually a big project, so... We'll get there. We'll get there. So anyway, yeah, that's about all I have for right now. I'll have to go back to work in a few days, and then my uh, being on disability, short-term disability, will be done. Didn't really want to have to go on short-term disability, but hell, I'm paying for it, so I might as well take it out. I was out of work for three weeks, so I'll go back with my purpley fingernails, which are kind of growing out as you can see. I'm not sure if I showed you this before, but you know, I kind of like this because you know, they they're, they look like this normally, but if you put them in some ice water, they come out looking like that. <laughs> they change color due to temperature. They're called mood nails, I guess. Ice water. So, after I saw them, I'm just like, I have to get those. Those are pretty cool. So, I don't know. I might go and back to the nail salon and have them fixed. But, yeah, I kind of like these nails. They've been they've been pretty pretty cool. Yeah, see the difference between the two colors? And they turn dark purple when they're cold. And then they're like this when they're warm. Cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, before this gets too long, I will see everybody later. Take care, everybody.